So, welcome back to a beer and a take. This time, you had the two of us, TJ's hammered, Nick right here representing Scoreboard Addicts Podcast. Anthony's out for the count. Love him to death, miss him terribly on his trip. We're out here on location, Caesars Palace, Atlantic City. We're doing a little different this time. What we got right now is an American classic, Yingling. And we'll be reviewing Yingling. Uh, obviously, Yingling's an American classic. One of uh, the, I think it's the it's oldest the brewery. oldest brewery in America. Yes. Of all the common beers that we have in America, like Coors Light, Budweiser, stuff like that, I, I would say Yingling is my most tolerable. That it's not a micro brew. Uh, and Yingling is definitely something I can still drink. No, and, and I, I, I love Yingling. I mean, especially from the Northeast, uh, Yingling's from Pennsylvania. I think Yingling is one of the best lagers you can get that's a out there mass produced beer. Um, usually, when you go to a bar, it's pretty reasonably priced. Nobody really drinks Yingling unless you're in Pennsylvania. Right. I know I love when I go skiing and stuff like that, you go to one of the uh, lodges in Pennsylvania, you can always get a Yingling on draft for three bucks, and you can't go wrong. So I, I like Yingling. It, it, it's smooth. It's crisp. It's crushable. I know it's that, crushable. Crushable. You can have uh, plenty of these, and uh, goes well with a nice cigar. I will say though that it does not have the wow factor. No, no. It does not have wow factor. It's a, it's a regular standard lock. It's a standard it need a wow factor. And, and uh, my first time I ever drank a Yingling, I thought it was a Chinese beer. Really? I thought it was like a Sapporo or like a a, a, a Kirin. Because okay. Yingling does not sound American at all, and it's spelled U U Yingling. I don't know. I thought it was Asian. Um, so our take is favorite uh, Christmas time beverages. We're not going to sports today. We're not We're doing good. sports. Christmas is tomorrow. Favorite Christmas beverages? Go, TJ. I, I love eggnog. I really do, and especially because you can pour bourbon into it. You pour a shot of bourbon, and even if you get your typical, you know, uh, supermarket brand. Uh, eggnog, like a Turkey Hill or something like Turkey that. Turkey Hill, yeah. Little ice, shot of bourbon, pull the eggnog on top. I, I think it goes a long way. I love eggnog. Me, what about you? me being Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican classic. Everybody knows about it. You ever, y'all got to call your favorite Maria to make you some coquito. I love coquito. It's nothing like the holidays with, without some coquito in your life. If you have a Puerto Rican friend, ask your friend, ask their mother to make you some coquito. And you'll take that eggnog, pack it up real tight, and throw it out the window. I would go that basura far. compared to co- coquito. I, w- I wouldn't go that far. I love coquito, and I always find it funny because at work, you know, you got the guy that has the hookup with the coquito. And he's selling it. Yeah, but it, 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 it's almost like a, a, a backroom deal. You kind of walk up like, oh, let me get that shit. You, it's you, it's you, sold you in like the money. It's sold in like empty Bacardi bottles. Yes. Or if they're, they're like getting real fancy, like my my, my family would sell it in like short milk bottles. Okay. I've had in the um, usually when I get it, it, it it's the pop top, almost like a, a, a Grolsch yes. bottle. Yes. 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 With the uh, you know rubber seal on top. Yep. They get it from IKEA. Yes. Yep. yep. Always good. But I'm a big fan of Coquito. I like Coquito. So and, and the cool thing about Coquito is, depending on who you go to, generations of families. You get a dis- different recipe. It always tastes a little bit different, and it, it, it's it's always a surprise. That has a wow factor. That's a that take a sip and you go wow. Damn it, man! We should, I w- if we would have had some coquito to do this beer and take, I would have thrown the beer away for a co- a glass of coquito. It's made with rum, coconut, condensed milk, uh, cinnamon, and vanilla, and it's just it's delicious. You can't go stuff. wrong with condensed milk. If you, if condensed you, milk is a, essentially liquid icing. I'll, I'll give it a two and a half. Only because I'm not into like of all the major beers, this is the best. I, I, I think two and a half is fair. I'm going to go to two and a half as well. I think because we've tried so many beers uh, all over the spectrum, and usually they're of either craft brew quality or it, 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 it's almost like a, or a, micro brew. A, micro brew. It has like a niche uh, kind of yeah. So this is for a mass produced beer. This is very solid. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to act like uh, two point five is disparaging, but uh, from what we've reviewed so far, I think uh, by comparison, I would give Coors Light and Budweiser a point five. Yeah, yeah. So they're cr- they're crushing their their competition for sure. Oh, absolutely. You can't go wrong. So 
That was day 24 of our beer advent calendar. School board addicts coming at you. We miss our man Rook, couldn't be with us, but I, I hope you guys enjoyed these reviews. Uh, thank you for sticking with us for the whole month. Hope everybody has a happy and healthy holiday. Nick, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from all of us here at School Board Axe Podcast. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.